Welcome back. Today, we're gonna put this transmission in there and make it go click, 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 click like it's supposed to. Uh, we're gonna show you how to assemble all these awesome parts here on the workbench. We're gonna show you what to look for, for where. And then we're gonna show you most importantly, the thing that a lot of people don't quite understand that's really not that difficult when you think about it, indexing your transmission so it shifts through all four gears. I think one of the biggest things about transmissions is you want to use very good components that aren't worn out. If, you're, if you have worn components, that will cause difficulty shifting even if you are indexed correctly. Uh, so, uh, as always, it's a good idea to have your workshop manual close by to uh, study the drawings, pictures, how things work, uh, what all the components you need to make it happen. Uh, I've basically arranged all the parts that go into this portion of the job to make sure I have everything I need all at once so I'm not in the middle of something and go, oh crap, I forgot about that. I've also inspected all the parts so they're all in good shape. I do have some worn out parts we'll show you here as we get moving along. Uh, the first thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and assemble. I, I know this seems silly that we're going to do this first, but we're going to need this after we get it indexed to check the shifting. So uh, go, we'll get some stuff off the workbench and we'll get the uh, kicker cover assembly assembled with the shifter and the stuff that goes in here. I didn't take out the clutch release. There's no reason to remove that if you don't need to. I did remove all the other stuff to clean it and inspect it and also I uh, polished up the cover while it was off the engine. So uh, let me grab another clean rag to set that on. Oh, never mind. Here's something right here. And for we're going to need this piece and these springs. And this is this is the part that sticks out that your shifter goes on. And we have the plungers with the springs. And then these parts right here. And basically all these components are gonna go right in here. Also take note that there is an O-ring that I've already pre-installed on this uh, shifter shaft. And when you slide this into here, that will keep the oil from leaking out around here. So be sure to replace that O-ring. All right, we'll start by putting this in there first. I'm just gonna put a little oil on the new seal so it goes through the hole. And since it is a new seal, it's probably not just gonna slip right in there. And it doesn't. So let's give it a whack. There she goes. As you're moving along, check that everything moves freely. Looks good. Okay, now we have these two springs one goes on each side of this shifter, and that's what's going to give it that return. If your springs have taken a little set to them and you're not replacing them, they're still good. See how that's got kind of a little curvature to it? Just put it back in the way it came out. Like so. And then the next thing that's going to go on is going to be this plate orientated like that. And you'll notice it has these edges. And when these are installed in these holes, like so, that edge will let that move as you're shifting up and down. And then these won't be popping out. But we'll put those in in a sec. But we put this plate on here. All right, it appears that all four of these studs have come out when they should have stayed in. So we're gonna put some Loctite on. I already did that one. Uh, the longer portion of this thread is gonna go into the cover. Shorter portion, there's like you can see on there, there's a little ridge where it stops. So 
So we'll go ahead and reinstall these. I don't really feel there's any need to double nut it because I'm putting some Loctite on them. So I'm just running them down in until they get to that little edge where the thread stops and starts again. And you can see the Loctite oozing out around the hole so you know it's going to work. And see they're all bottom to that edge. That one's not. There we go. Okay, so we've got all those Loctited. Then we're going to put this plate on top and a serrated washer on each one. Followed by the nut. And if I would have already put these in the hole, then they would have been pushing up on this and it's much easier to just do it like this. Okay, there we go. And here's my wrench. Tighten them all down evenly. And anytime I'm doing this, I like to go back over a couple times, make sure I got it good. That one seems nice and tight. That one's good. Okay, now in order to get those in there, we're gonna need to just temporarily throw a shifter on there. And then there's our spring action from the first two springs we put in. And then these are just gonna drop the spring down in the hole. And then you're gonna put this while holding it that way. Boom, see that? Now we're gonna have to see how when you, this is what I was referring to earlier, there's a slant on that and an angle on that. So when you're shifting, this is sliding against that. So then we're gonna turn this, and drop our other one in there. And that's what it'll look like when you're done. Now, there is also this seal, which seals your Kickstarter gear. And that goes underneath this little, uh, see there's a lip there. And it's very difficult to get this, see if you'll see, notice this is not an O-ring, it's square. It's got a flat edge. Uh, very difficult to just try to stick it in that hole and work it around. So what you're gonna do next is you're just gonna grab your favorite punch and you're gonna tap that piece out of there. Now there she comes, she's starting to come. And anytime you're driving something like this out, you wanna go side to side. You don't wanna just bang all the way on one side. You wanna kinda of go side to side. And there it comes, now it's out. And that's where the new seal's gonna go. It looks a little grimy in there. So we'll give that a quick wipe down. A little bit of old grease left in there from previous years. Now, clean this off a little bit. And I like to put the seal 
in here like so. Now see how difficult that would have been to try to work it without taking this out. And you're just gonna pop that back in there with your favorite useless socket. And you wanna make sure it's down in there all the way and it is not. There she is, hear that tone? Anytime you're beating on things like that, oh, and look at that, beautiful installation. There's our new seal in there. So when this gets slipped in here, that will keep this from leaking oil out of the transmission. Okay, so that's it for this. Now we've got our clutch part we've just temporarily installed on there and our new cap with an, or our cap with an O-ring. And that's it for the kicker cover. There's, I don't see any need to put the kicker gear in there right now because we're gonna be using this to when check the indexing of the tranny. And that's just one less thing that's in the way. We'll put that on there. Uh, final assembly. Now, I'm gonna show you in the book, there's a specific way you're, you're actually going to index this spring. And you're gonna drop it over this, and then it's gonna line up with this. And I'll show you the picture in the book. If this book has that picture, which it should, oh, there it is right there. Locating Tang, Kickstarter Quadrant and Spring Location. So you can see, here's where your pin goes. Oh, we had it upside down. Here's where your pin goes, and you're gonna line up this piece of the spring with this slot right there on here. So you're just gonna slide that over. And sometimes the screwdriver's needed for, just gonna work that spring over it. Like so. Now you can see that that tang on the spring is lined up with this, if you drew an imaginary line there. And that's how it will be when it goes onto that cover. So that's all good. Well, we already showed you how to put these bearings in. The uh, lay shaft and main shaft bearing with the snap ring already installed from previous. The only other thing we need to put in here is our selector quadrant. This is the pin for the selector quadrant. That's gonna go in this hole right here. So it's a good idea. Once again, trial fit your parts, make sure everything's working smoothly. If something's not right, fix it before you install a part to find out, wow, that's stuck in there. I can't get it back out. Okay, you can only install this one correct way. And you'll see there's a hole on there, which coincides with the hole on there. And this is gonna take two cotter pins. And that's what holds that in there. And so basically you're just gonna stick this in the hole, like so. Oh, see, we're backwards. We can't do it that way. See the hole is there? That's incorrect. The hole's facing this way. We're gonna put it this way, because that way, when we slide that other pin in there, then it will line up with the hole on here. So, I'm gonna put a little dab of grease on her, because I love grease on everything. Grease or oil, assembly lube or Loctite. That's what we like. like so, and then you have to look, you have to orientate your pin so that the hole lines up. So you're just gonna turn it, and there it is, I can see it. You're gonna pull it out just a little bit. That's probably very difficult to see, such a tiny hole. 
And notice there's another small hole. See, there's two holes, two cotter pins. So one of the cotter pins goes through the hole, the other cotter pin goes through the groove. So that's back in there. And there's our hole lined up again. We're gonna drop our cotter pin in there. Should go in nice and easy like so. And then we're gonna put the other cotter pin in this hole. And we're gonna orientate the cotter pin, the head of it, so that we can, you now we'll turn this around so that we have the long side facing this way. These are actually a little longer than necessary. And then we're just gonna bend that up like so, past the gasket surface and bend that one down. We can actually trim that just a skosh. So it'll go down all the way. There we go, that one's installed and bent over. And then we need to bend this one over. Once again, orientate the cotter pin so we can bend this. This one's a little trickier. And take your screwdriver that you had a minute ago here. What do we do with that? There we go. And bend that all the way up, like so. And bend the other side the opposite direction. Got to flip it over to get to that one. And there we go. Now this part's installed. That's what actually coincides with when this is together, those two little chingas there go into those. And when you shift, it moves this up and down, which in turn coincides with this, like so. And then as you move this up and down, it rotates this, which in turn has the shifter forks in this groove and that's what slides it back and forth to go into the different gears. And you can see a really neat picture of that in the book too. Uh, here it is right here, gang. There's the piece that's in the cover. There's the quadrant we just installed. There's the cam plate that I just showed you and the detent and the selector forks. Once again, Workshop manual has a lot of great illustrations of this procedure. Okay, we'll go ahead and set this aside. We're done with this for now. It's also a good idea to check this is the stop for your kicker. Make sure that's in good shape. It just has one little mark on it. I've seen them where they're boogered up. Make sure it's tight in there. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the cam plate in. Uh, Worth noting to give this thing a thorough inspection, you see these. this groove is where the selector forks ride. They have this little roller that goes on there. And when this thing's all together, this has to ride around in that groove to change gears. Well, you wanna take a real good look at this part to make sure it's not worn out because if it's worn out, it won't shift good. And also, it, it gets wear on this surface right here from the plunger. I also just found a, a pretty worn out uh, quadrant. If you want to get a look at this, this definitely would not shift correctly. Look at the teeth on there. See how they're worn, rounded. This part is a reject. No bueno. Even though these teeth are still okay, that's a no good. All right, moving along. This is your plunger. This is your plunger holder. You're gonna have a spring. Like so. That'll get threaded up from the bottom. Now, what's very interesting is I could probably go grab about six different plungers and they all have a little bit different profile on them. I actually just brought this one home from, from the shop today and I'm going to try it out. I had this one in there. I was trial fitting it before you showed up today. And we're going to try this. See how it's more rounded on the end? It's not as pointed. 
We're gonna try this new one on there and see how well it functions. And also, I'm going to be putting this special kind of a ceiling washer over that. Once again, make sure your plunger moves freely and your spring has good tension. So we're gonna go ahead and thread this up in from the bottom. with our new ceiling washer on it. And we'll tighten her down. And then we can go ahead and put this back in here while depressing that. And this might actually be a better way to do it because you want to make sure this is threading nicely. This is aluminum, that's steel. If you're trying to force that up into this and it's not threading good, you might not be able to feel it. So we'll go ahead and pop this in there. We'll depress the plunger. I know this is probably hard to see. I'm having a hard time depressing the plunger. So, all right, I'm checking the action on the cam plate with the plunger to make sure it moves freely and it's liking each other. Uh, you'll notice this ha does have a range of motion and that's as far as it's gonna go. And then these are all of the different gears. And so basically I'm just testing it Feels real nice. Now this is gonna, I've marked this as actually a 71, 72, a little bit different. I don't like mixing and matching. Uh, this one has way further throw between the gears, but I'm just showing you this because I want you to know which slot does which gear. And you can see that this is installed in the engine like so. And this is first. That notch is neutral, second, third, fourth. Okay, so we can see, by looking at this, we can see right now we're in neutral, and if we go this way, that'd be hitting the shifter down, you're in first, neutral, second. We're going past that extra notch, that's third. And then there's another extra notch on this one and that's fourth. So the earlier cam plate had some extra notches, but that seems to be working real nice. I'm happy with that. So this is gonna be our main shaft here. This is our lay shaft or counter shaft. And once again, if we refer to our book and we go to the diagrams where the uh, transmission gears are shown, you can figure out what gear is what. Right here is a really awesome picture. This is, let's orientate it the same way it is in the book. And you'll see that this is first gear, first gear, third gear, second gear, and fourth gear. So, this is fourth gear that's going to get installed in the bearing that we previously put in the case. Once again, check for wear. This is where your seal's gonna ride on this one. Uh, early and late have a different uh, seal size and a different cover. This is the cover that's gonna go opposite here. We'll show you this. Go ahead and flip this around so you can get a look. Obviously, if you've been following along and watching it come apart, you know where that goes, but we'll show you anyway. This cover goes here with this seal, and this protrudes through that seal. This right here is what seals the, the fluid from leaking out in between those two. So we're gonna go ahead and install this in the bearing. And you gotta have this in there first because you can't get this in. You can't get the cam plate in if you put this in first. So that's just gonna go right in that bearing. 
slides right in like that. Check it to make sure it's spinning freely. Everything's good there. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our main drive gear on. And this surface of the gear, the sprocket, is what forms a seal on this seal that we installed a couple of videos ago. We did that before we put the, after we put the case together because it's much easier to get that in there. And uh, oh, I forgot, I'm, I'm doing a 20 tooth on here. We're not going to go into gearing. We're putting a motor together. But the other thing that I can show you real quick, we can slide this back out real quick. I always like to trial fit these two parts. I want to make sure that these slide together. Oh, like that. I don't want to get to the point where I've got this in there and now my sprocket won't go on because it's not fitting correctly. So once again, put that in there and a little dab of oil on here to help this slide in the seal. I'm holding this with one hand so I don't push it out and then I'm going to slide this over the splines on this and into the seal like so. Now the next thing we need is our lock tab. Once the nut is on and torqued, you'll bend this over so it doesn't come loose. There we go. Okay, then we'll go ahead and uh, get our nut on there. Should go on nice and easy. Shouldn't be any forcing that, no forcing of nuts. It's not threading on easily. The threads are boogered, stop. Take it apart, look at it, figure out why. Okay, now, bet you're wondering how in good God's name we're gonna torque that darn nut. I'm gonna show you. All right, so here's how I'm gonna torque that nut. I've got this old piece of chain, I've wrapped it around the sprocket. I've tightened the chain in my vise, so when I put my torque wrench on there, it should stay still. Now it's gonna wanna pull the motor this way as I'm torquing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pop this piece of wood in here to protect the engine. We're gonna torque this to 90 foot-pounds. See how it's pulling the motor up against the wood? Easy peasy. Oh, easy now. It's all right, we're good. Okay, there she is. So now that we've got the nut torqued, we can bend over the lock tab. Doesn't have to be pretty, just has to work. There we go. Now we're gonna be ready to start assembling the transmission. All right, so we got our main drive gear, lock tab bent down. Uh, before we proceed with the tranny, I wanna show you a couple things here. I know I talked about this earlier, but I didn't show you the, the gear. Uh, this is a late one where the bushing is where the main shaft rides on this bushing, that's the fit. Uh, this one has this machined edge that the seal for this cover rides on. When this cover goes over here, and then this seal goes in there. Uh, and the reason I'm showing you this is because there's two different sizes. Here's the other cover. This is early, where it doesn't have this machined, where the bushing actually does the sealing. Oh boy, that seal's so old and hard, I can't even push that through there, but you'll, if we get a look here, we can see that the diameter of those is much different. 
So basically just pay attention when you're ordering new parts. If you have this one, you get the small seal. If you have this one, you get the big seal. Also important if we're mixing and matching parts. Here's the new, what the new seal looks like. And I also want to show you a couple of worn out gears. Uh, when you're inspecting your, your tranny, before once you've disassembled it and you've inspected it before reassembly, uh, what we're looking for is things like this. There's a broken tooth on this one. And this one, there's some pitting on the teeth. You can see right there, it's all pitted. And you can also see on this one where the gear engages with the next one when they slide together, it's pretty worn out there. So these are the kind of things you're looking for, is wear here, wear on the teeth, or broken teeth. Any of those things? No bueno, don't wanna use those. Okay, so we have one more part to put in the bottom of the crankcase. And what this does, this is your level plug. And the way this works is, when this is threaded up in there, we'll show you after we put it in. In order to check your transmission level, you're going to take this smaller of the two on the bottom of the engine, bottom of the transmission, you're gonna take this out. And then you can see that, well, we'll go ahead and thread it in. When this is threaded in there, when the transmission level is correct, it will be right at the, the top of this tube. And so when you're filling your tranny, when it's empty, you'll fill it up until oil drips out of this hole, and then it's at that level. So that's how you can tell your tranny's at the correct level. You wanna put a new ceiling washer so it doesn't leak, and you're just gonna thread that in the bottom right there. Tighten it up. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so if you wanna look, you can see the transmission fluid level will be at the top of that standpipe right there. There's also a copper ceiling washer on the smaller one that you'll remove for checking the level. So you don't really wanna crank this one down and if you start taking the little one out and the big one's coming out too, you might wanna put a wrench on it or if you've drained the tranny or it's not filled up, you just wanna make sure that the standpipe portion of this is tight in the case and this one's not over tightened so that they don't both come out together. Cause then if you're filling your tranny, you'll have a big hole and all the tranny fluid will come out on the wherever. It'll make a mess. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, snug that one up. We won't tighten it all the way because obviously we're gonna have to take it back off when we fill the tranny. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and get started uh, putting the gears in the transmission to prepare ourselves for indexing. Uh, we'll talk about the shift forks real quick. You may notice on the shift forks, there's gonna be this roller that fits over that pin. And those roll in that cam plate. Well, you'll notice that the location of those is in a different place. The one that's more towards the middle is gonna go on the counter shaft or lay shaft. The one towards the end is gonna go on the main shaft when it's all installed. And what I like to do for these, I just put a dab of grease on there and that will hold the roller on there so it doesn't fall off when I go to put it in the transmission. Okay, we have these 
two thrust washers and one will go inside the transmission where the lay shaft bearing is that we installed earlier with the special tool. And also we'll put a little dab of grease on the back side of this to stick it on the inside of there so it doesn't fall off as we're putting the counter shaft in. And then the other end of the counter shaft will get the same thrust washer right here where the other bearing is, like so. You can also check these for wear. This one has a little wear on it, but it's not terrible. It's just one spot. It's got a little bit of wear. They should be pretty flat and they look pretty good. If they're worn down really hard, then you might want to look into getting some replacement ones. We do have those available on the website. So we'll uh, put some grease on her. on the back side of it in a couple of spots and then we're going to reach in here and, and you'll notice there's a little tit that lines up with that hole so that has to be indexed in that hole and it's kind of hard to get in there and get it so you just kind of got to fiddle around with it a little bit there and where you missed it completely but we'll get it there she goes. You kind of got to put it in and kind of turn it till it hits the hole where the little dowel pin is and there you go. Now that thrust washer's in there and it won't fall off because we've got the grease on it. If you look in the book, you're going to see there's, uh, they're going to show you how to index this tranny. I don't uh, do it the way they show it in the book. Uh, I can't take credit for the way I'm going to show you how to do it. It is. Uh, if you look on the internet, you'll find out this is the Huey Hancock's method. And I've found over the years, uh, this basically works the best for me. Probably will work good for you too. You're gonna put this selector into first gear. And once again, we can grab our, uh, we can grab the one that's marked and you can see where first gear is. This is how it is assembled in the engine. And if we look on the back side, we can see that's first gear. So that it's gonna be positioned like this with the plunger right there. And that'll be for first gear. So all throughout the assembly, until we get the inner cover on there for indexing, we're gonna keep it in first gear. The book's gonna show you to put it on this notch between third and fourth. And then you're gonna line up a tooth on that with the, with the main shaft and blah, 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 blah. This way works way easier, you'll see. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the counter shaft in. And you see this, where the two gears come together. That's where this is gonna ride, like so. And you can have that on there now, that's perfectly fine. And you're gonna go ahead and, uh, or you can do it either way. You can have it, put it on afterwards. You're gonna go ahead and put your counter shaft in, like so. We're gonna slide these out a little bit. We're gonna put that selector fork on there, and then we're gonna just insert it into that slot on the cam plate. And you may notice this rod is gonna go through both the selector forks and into a hole on the back side. And right now, there it is lined up. But we'll show you how that works in a sec. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove these two gears off of the main shaft and we're gonna set them inside the tranny on top of the other gears. And then once we get those in there with the shift fork and the shift fork shaft, we can go ahead and slide the main shaft through the whole mess out the other side and then we'll have all the gears except for this one that goes on the lay shaft right here. You can't get these in with that on, so that goes on last. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the one that goes all the way in first, and we're gonna put the shift fork on it now because it'll be pretty difficult to get it in there with the shift fork. And then, so we're gonna stick it in there and we're gonna get this piece of the roller in the cam plate. Don't be alarmed if it's not going right in to where it needs to go and if that falls out it's not a big deal 
And now I can see that the roller is just about engaged in the slot where it needs to go. So what I'm going to do next is, and I'm not worried if those fall out, I'm going to install the shift fork shaft. And that will help those stay in the correct place where they need to be for the rest of the assembly. So I've got my shift fork shaft started. I haven't got it through the second shift fork, the one that goes. And I'm just kind of going to look in there and verify that it is starting where it needs to go. And it is. And then I'm going to slide that home like so. Once again, double check. It's, it's where it needs to be. Then I can go ahead and put that gear. See how that gear is just sitting on top of the other one? The teeth are holding it up. Okay, now, we're, now we can go ahead and set this one in there, making sure that the shift fork is on that spot right there. Like so. And now we're ready to just slide the main shaft through. If everything's lined up, should go right in. And it does. All right, now that we know everything's lined up, it's all good, we're gonna put some oil on here. And then last but not least, we're gonna put this gear on the lay shaft with that side facing in, like so. Now, when this is, when the other cover goes on here, this gear is actually, this main shaft is gonna be right there because it's gonna get pulled this way when we put the kicker gear on. So that's what it looks like all assembled. Give that a little push to make sure it's all the way seated in the back side there. And we can also put some oil on the shift forks where they're gonna roll. A little bit of oil in there, a little bit of oil on the shaft, there we go. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and put the inner cover on. Now uh, we're gonna trial fit it, check our indexing, and then we'll pop it back off and put our gasket with some gasket cement on there and finalize the indexing. Uh, once again, a little dab of grease on the back side of the thrust washer to hold it so it sticks on the cover and doesn't fall off. It's also important that you have these two dowels in, in your crankcase. Make sure those are in place. Sometimes they get stuck on here, but if you don't have them, you should put some in there. They kind of line everything up. And you can also we're in first gear, you can also give her a spin and make sure it turns freely and trying to walk out, but that's good, okay. Now when we go to push this home, it's gonna shove that that way, don't worry about that. When we put the kicker gear on, we'll pull it back this way. So we'll leave it like that for now. And this is the, the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and get this started on here. Main shaft's gonna go through that bearing. And the counter shaft, end of the counter shaft's gonna go into that bearing, like so. Okay, now notice it's just got a gap, but this is locked down. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull it back out just a little bit until you can move this. Okay, so we've Got our quadrant free, and it's all the way up till it's hitting, and then we're gonna bring it down, and we're gonna send this, when this starts to come up, that's like one tooth, and that should be indexed. So once it goes, it hits up, bring it down one tooth. And you can kind of see where it's at there. Now what, what we'll do next, is we'll 
Oh, look, she spins nice. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and put the kicker gear on. We'll show you the pieces for this. And there's a bunch of stuff going on here. Nothing complicated, just a bunch of parts to put on there and make sure they're all there. First, there's a washer. That goes on first. Then you've got this, the spring and the sleeve that goes down the middle of this, like so. And, that, and then you have the splines that match the main shaft on the, this piece. So you're just gonna put that all on there like so. And get this, see how that's got the spring action now. That's for when you're kickstarting your motorcycle so that the, so you're gonna hold that you're going to put a new lock tab and it has a little piece that index in one of those splines like so and then the finally the nut on the outside and for we're going to go ahead and uh, put the three screws in even though we don't have the gasket i'm just showing you how we're going to index it and then we'll take it back apart and put the sealer on and there's going to be three screws this one goes here cheese head and don't crank them all down until you get them all in we've got this large allen head goes here And then this special fastener here with a small head and it has a very small washer because there's a spot right here where it goes and you can't put a big washer on there because it won't fit. Now we can go ahead and use our cover to check our shifting to make sure that it's indexed correctly. And we'll check to see if it shifts. And I'm not gonna put all the bolts in here right just yet because I still gotta put the gasket on there. So I'm just gonna hold this on to check it. First is all the way down, second, third, fourth. Whoa, look at that. She shifts, fourth, third, Second, first, neutral, first, second, third, fourth. Should shift up and down like that a hundred times unless you turn the sprocket or the main shaft and that misaligns things in there. But when everything's lined up right, it's a beautiful thing. We're back in first. We'll pop this off. We know where, what it looks like, where it needs to be. We can kind of get an idea of where it is. We'll pop this back off. We'll put the gasket and some cement on there and we'll be done. Now that wasn't so difficult, was it? I think one of the reasons I put this together dry with no gasket and sealer is because I want to make sure it works before I put my sealer on the, and on the gasket because then if it doesn't shift right, then you're taking the cover off and putting the cover on and taking the cover off and putting the cover on with sealer and a gasket there. So now that I know it's right, we can do it again. It's not a problem. I got some uh, case sealer here. I'm just gonna put a little bead of this on there. Put 
Sugar on for the final, final whammy. Once again, we're all the way down. And we're gonna come up one tooth. That's it right there. Get our fasteners in back in there. I decided to change this fastener because I noticed when I had it trial fit the first time that it was sticking way out the back. Don't ask me how the heck that happened, I don't know. So we replaced that with an Allen head with the correct Find threads for British motorcycles. Okay, we'll put our kicker gear back on. Washer first. Sleeve with spring. Lock tab. All right, now that we got our gasket and our glue and we're all tightened down, let's uh, double check, verify that it does work before we put the cover on for the last time. First gear, second, third, fourth. And once again, when checking your tranny, if it doesn't click through all the gears, ever so slightly rotate the main drive gear or the main shaft and that'll get things lined up inside there and get it to the point where it does what I'm doing right now. Click, 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 click. Then you know when it's on the road, if it shifts like that on the bench right now, it's gonna work when you're on the road. So I'm confident that we have indexed our transmission correctly. We're gonna tighten this nut. We're gonna put a gasket on here. We're gonna install this kicker gear. We'll show you how to wind that baby up so she's tensioned correctly. And we'll be done with this portion here today. We need to torque this nut for the kicker gear. Make sure you got that spring located correctly where that ratcheting gear springs back. Torque spec is 45 foot-pounds. And hopefully it works like this. I've never tried this before. And you guys thought I knew what I was doing. Oh, that's tight. All right, we're gonna do the same program. We're gonna lock the chain in the vise around the sprocket to torque that. And let's see how this works, gang. There's 30, let's go a little more. Forty-five it is. There she is, gang, all torqued up. And then finally, we're gonna bend the lock tab over. Like a so. I know there's two on there, you don't need to bend them both, but 
then next time if you need to take it apart again, you have another choice. Now all we gotta do, oh I'm sorry, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the feed return on that goes right here on this stud. Much easier to get that on here now than be before you put the kicker cover on. New gasket, and I think we'll uh, lean her over so I can see what's going on. Okay, so I've got my gasket. I use this to push it up on there onto that little dowel pin that's there. And then you're just gonna slide this home. Flat washer. And a nut. Well, now I know why they normally have a small nut on here. It's hard to get to with this big nut. Where'd that come from? There we go, we got it. Tight. Uh, one other thing I usually do with these after I get them on the motor is I kind of look at how they're orientated to the bottom of the engine. I'm going to need just a little bit more room to get the hoses on. So I'm going to just give that a little tweak down like that right now while I can because it's easier to get to. Now I've got it's pretty even with the bottom. All right, we need to put our uh, kicker gear in the cover. And you, it's a good idea to inspect this surface right here where it rides against that seal to make sure you don't have a groove or then it won't uh, seal the oil. We'll just put a little bit of, just a little dab of oil on there to help it through that new seal. And I'm sure this is going to be a tight one. <clears throat> and you know I how I love my rubber hammer. Bam! Hey, look at that. We shaved a little bit off of that seal we did. That's okay. Seal's still in there. It didn't go anywhere. Okay, then you're going to hook the spring on this titty. Bam! Like so. Now what we need to do is grab an, an old kicker to slip it over the shaft and put a pin on it so we can wind the spring up so it has tension when, you're, when you kick it through that it'll return. Okay, a little bit of sealer on here like we did before. not to get it in the holes. That should be good. Always use a new gasket. Once again, we got our little dowels on there, like I, two dowels on each side. And a little dab of grease in the hole there. A little bit on there. Take your new kicker. Put it on temporarily to wind up our spring. And we could actually put a little bit of sealer on this too.
Now that we've got some sealer on there, we're gonna wind this baby up that much. And you'll see in a sec here when I put this on how this works. Basically, we're gonna get this started and then we're gonna go past where the stop is and then it'll go on. Like so. Go ahead and get your long screws, top and bottom. And I did check the threaded holes all the way on the inside long ago to be sure they were in good shape. Because there's nothing like getting to this point of the game to find out you're tightening one of these two long screws and it just keeps spinning because the threads are boogered. You're gonna have two long ones here. And the shorter one goes here. Not too tight, just right. And then you've got a couple of ceiling washers here. and a couple of acorn nuts to go on the studs. So if you look in the parts book, they show an acorn nut on the top for decoration and they show a regular nut on the bottom, but since I happen to have two new acorns, I'm just gonna go ahead and use those. Then we also checked all these threads. Make sure everything's happy together. And now you can, uh, we'll put her in neutral to. There's our ratcheter. That's returning. Pretty darn good there. Woo! We got her wound up. And there it is. That concludes the transmission portion of our 650 rebuild. And as we can all see, we're getting along pretty good. We got one more area to cover. See you next time, guys. Woo!